Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we are going to get enchanted. So I hope you guys are ready. So today I think I want to jump in and start enchanting some things. So I have my mob crusher over here, and I think I'm going to need an ender tank, like to get sort of started with this. Um, we are going to need a couple of ender tanks. Let's go ahead and grab those. Very simple. Um, these are going to be wide, of course. They work very similar to the Ender chest, um, except for with fluids. So we're going to be utilizing those. We're also going to need some fluid pipes. Um, I guess the best one is probably going to be from Mechanism, which is probably going to require a bucket, isn't it? Almost guaranteed. Mechanism. Let's see. We have middle buckets right here. This is what we need. Um, and then I, I need my configurator. And then that's about it, right? So Mob Crusher is going to take this thing's place. Also, this inner chest is about to change. Let's go ahead and hop up here and turn all of this off. Um, so what am I going to be doing? I'm going to be basically using this Mob Crusher to kill the mobs instead of uh, how it currently works. Let's flip that off. That should... I can't, we got mobs stuck up there. Um, but we should now have that in the inner chest, or it should end up in the inner chest. Oh, no, I ended up picking it up. Okay, so Mob Crusher is going to take this place. Let's go ahead and break this, because we no longer need that. Um, technically, we could still use this hopper. I am going to need another block to sort of put here. Let's see, how about this block? That would not look too bad. Just like that. And then under here is going to go the actual mob crusher. And it works very similar to the plate, except this is going to be more contained. Let's go ahead and place it like this. Um, and I took this one from the farm up top. I don't really need any more. As you can see, I have so much raw beef. I have so much leather. It's just a, a crazy amount at this point to continue with more. Um, I'm also going to need a point. And I don't know... If I have enough material to make a point, should have some more ender pearls. There we go. That should work. Perfect. And a point. Perfect. And I should have plenty of redstone that's that has been remined up with that mining laser. So this is going to go here. We'll connect it. We'll get this going. And this should kill the mobs that are directly in front of it. It should. Uh, and you can see the 200 essence here has sort of built up. Um, I'm going to take this as we don't need this here anymore and place it here. Basically, we're going to funnel to each side. One is going to have a, a logistical pipe. A logistical pipe right here. And so we're going to funnel a logistical pipe here. And then on the other side is going to be the uh, mechanical pipe. And basically just set them up to both extract. Like so. And as you can see, we now have the essence in here. So um, at this point, we do have essence that is going to build up. Um, all I got to do is turn this back on and this should work. And I don't even have to put an expansion card in here because it should just start working. Um, let's get this guy off of here. Yep. And get out of here. <laughs> Before they start going crazy. So yeah, that pressure, that, that vector plate should still push them right in front of this. And that will cause this to go. This will work. As it runs through, all the items should end up in here as normal, except for where after this. We need the essence. Because I want to set up the enchanting system that Industrial Foregoing has to offer. And it is quite vast and is probably one of the nicer reasons to have this set up in the first place. So in order for me to make all of these enchanting machines that come from Industrial Foregoing, I'm gonna need some stuff, a lot of advanced stuff, a lot of expensive stuff. As you can see right here, we're gonna need netherite. So in order for me to gather more netherite, we're gonna need to set up a few things. Of course, we can take our industrial laser and potentially find it here with a brown lens. I'm hoping that this is a good way to find it in the nether. There's a potential for that. Um, or we could manually mine for it. I'm thinking about taking the laser and actually setting it up in the nether. Like, this has the potential to do well. Um, there's also this, but I don't think we're going to have enough mana in order to successfully utilize this um, and make an orchid 
uh, at the moment. It also requires like going through all of the runes, and making the runes is pretty tedious. Also, it does require more than just runes. Um, as you can see, if we take a look here at this being smelted up, right? Um, let's see. How do we get this? Right here. So, uh, this actually requires us to have the full setup from Batania. So, I don't want to dive into that just yet, even though having these things would be pretty nice. I'm thinking about taking our laser drill and just moving it. Yeah, why not? I mean, we can just take this one temporarily and see how fast it can actually mine elsewhere. I'm kind of into that. I want to see what this can do. So here we are in the nether, and uh, this should be just what we want. Let's go ahead and slap our flex plugs on here. Um, now, I do need to set this. I don't actually know, other than gold ore, what ore is even going to be mined up here. Um, so this is going to be kind of interesting to really see what gets pulled up. Um, because there shouldn't be too much like running against this. Um, you know, I mean, I don't know exactly what all it's going to mine up. I mean, quartz maybe like with us putting that lens in there and setting it to mine at what? Why level 15? That should be like the best level for it to mine. We can set this all the way down. Oh, it's mining iron. <laughs> what? Okay. Let's set this down to 15. There we go. It mined iron, which has me kind of concerned. <laughs> My torch ended up getting broke. Let's place that back in here so we can all see. There we go. Um, so yeah, I can I can set these guys, by the way, to chunk loading. Um, I'm sure that they are all in the same chunk. I'm just going to set them to chunk loading. They should load the chunk that they were in. Oh, glowstone. That's not horrible. But, you know, we're definitely after something else. So I'm hoping that we can pick it up in here. I'm also going to go mining for it because, you know, that's just something that has to happen anyways. I definitely need um, quite a few of it. Actually, I don't need hor a horrible amount. Four. So each one of these requires two, and I can actually get three netherite scrap per ancient debris using mechanism. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. I do have the machines here. Basically goes in a crusher, then goes in a enrichment chamber, and then we're good. Um, so all I need is four inch debris and we might be able to find that in a single vein. So while this is working, I'm going to be working down here, getting all this done. So I just decided to come back and check on this and looky there, ancient debris. It actually does collect it and it's not super slow at it. So since I have quite a few ore from the overworld, I'm going to leave this running. And it does seem like it pulls in things from mechanism, osmium, pulling in things from the overworld as well, along with glowstone and ancient debris. And of course, I am definitely after Ancient Debris. So it should say chunk loaded. It should keep this dimension loaded and we should be good. Plus, I'm not really needing that extra Ancient Debris there as on my own, I ended up finding five of them. So let's go ahead and get that mechanism set up uh, or the mechanism uh, system set up so that way we can now take this and turn it into three times as much Ancient Debris. Now, the funny thing is, is this setup doesn't really require too much, just some power to a crusher and an enrichment chamber. I mean, that's that's honestly about it. Um, we also need um, some way to get the items in, but really, at this point, let's just go ahead and configure this. Um, we can set this to auto-eject. Um, now, a lot of people have kind of mentioned, why don't you just put a chest on here and have it just go in? Well, this machine, unfortunately, doesn't work that way. I wish it did. I wish there was a way to automatically have items just be pulled in, but it doesn't have that uh, that setting. However, it will send the items to the adjacent adjacent machine so long as you have the settings set right. So to do so, I like to clear by holding shift. This will clear the input and output. I'm just gonna set the output on this to go to this machine to the right and then have the left be the input. Basically, this should allow when I put this in and it finishes, it should go into the Richmond chamber. So basically we should end up with three times five. So we should end up with a total of 15. Um, if, yeah, as you can see, there's three. And uh, this now goes in here. And this three netherite uh, scrap or dirty netherite scrap turns into regular netherite. Um, now, yeah, that's basically it. That's basically all you can really do with this um, to guarantee you yourself quite a bit more. Um, I've seen other ways in here of duplicating but nothing triples except for mechanism. Mechanism will triple the output. However, now that I look at this, what a weird recipe this is. 
let's take a look at like this, for example. Um, I was taking, a, I was just looking at this enrichment chamber recipe. Does it give you the blood magic netherite sand? Because if that's the case, then that would be doing a five time output. But it does seem like it probably does this, this recipe first, this top recipe. But if it did this, that would be really nice because this could be just smelted and you get the netherite scrap from this. But obviously that's not the case. Also, I wonder if there is a better way to do this. Let's just take a look at this, for example. Um, let's see. Using this, this will gives you... Wait, what? Throwing this in here gives you four. Actually, using the crushing wheel is probably better. Now that I look at this. <laughs> oh, using the crushing wheel will give you way more. I didn't realize it was giving you the blood magic variant. So yeah, you could have four times if you use the crushing wheel setup that we already have. That's crazy. So just like the rest, we have to go through the same process and that is setting up the stuff in the dissolution chamber. Of course, they don't have to go in order just so long as you have the proper components going in here, you should be fine. Um, now this right here requires a gold gear. So I'm gonna need four gold gears. The other ones require diamond and also pink slime. So keep that in mind. I want all of these machines though. So I am going to go through the process of making every single one because I think these machines are incredibly powerful for enchanting items as you can pretty much max enchant things or enchant things that are already enchanted, which is pretty cool instead of using an anvil. And this doesn't use your experience. It uses the essence. So after about 15 minutes or so, we now have our last one being made. These beautiful advanced machine frames. There we go. So we can actually start making some of these things, right? Right, we should. We have pretty much everything we need. Nether brick, I just need to just craft these things up and then we are about to be on our way. So here's an enchantment extractor, enchantment applicator. Well, I would say this would be pretty difficult as we would need a lot of iron, but luckily we have tons of it. I think the only thing is gold, but I we could always smelt some more. I don't need my mob slaughter factory. Let's see, enchantment sorter is not a must have, but it is something that we can definitely go ahead and grab. It just needs an enchantment enchanted book. Um, so anything, Let's see, feather falling, anything that's not that great. I don't really care. A lot of feather falling books. How about lure one? There we go. Enchantment sorter. And then the enchantment factory, which is one of my favorites as it's an enchanting table. Pretty, pretty nice. All of these machines are really nice. Like, re like really nice, <laughs> like very nice. By the way, again, did, did I mention that this is great? <laughs> I just wanted to throw that out there. All right, so enchantment extractor. Um, let's go ahead and set this up. I want at my enchantment factory. I guess we can place it here. I'm gonna have it setting in between this. Um, enchantment factory first. Um, then what would I want? Enchantment applicator probably last. Um, enchantment extractor basically pulls enchantments off of your current gear and puts them onto books, which is probably another great thing to have. Um, enchantment sorter. I'm thinking, uh, I'm trying to remember what the enchantment sorter actually does. Oh, I think this one rips enchantments off of books and sorts them. Um, no, this does something totally different. I need to remember exactly what this does. <laughs> it's been a while since I've actually used that one. Um, enchantment extractor, I do know what it does. Uh, it does exactly what I said a minute ago. And then enchantment applicator, of course, puts everything together. All right, so um, as you can see, it they, this, they basically all require power. Some require fluid though. Like this requires fluid, this requires fluid. Um, and those fluids, of course, is this right here. The ender st stuff right here. So I need to get power onto all of these guys. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this down, give myself a nice little floor, and I am going to route some nice power to all of them using our universal power cables. Very similar to everything else that we've used in Death Before Going, just getting these powered this way is pretty si simple and straightforward, right? All right, let's place that. I think that is everything. Oop, I do need a cable. Just one more cable. It's usually how it always is though. It's just, just one more. Just one more, that's all we need. All right, cable right in here. I could use the power cable as well, I guess. Um, now on the back, I am going to route the fluid pipes 
and I'm probably going to need a few more than what I currently have because I got to get the fluid pipes all the way over here. Um, and I just don't think nine fluid pipes are, are going to work. All right. So let's see mechanism and we have the yeah mechanical pipes. Let's go ahead and grab, make some more of those. Yeah, they require buckets. Okay, perfect. That that's more than enough. Go ahead and fill that in there. As this one doesn't require it, so I'm not gonna send that over there. But right here, I am going to place that in. Perfect. Now all we gotta do is configure this basically to pull. There we go. That should start sending into all of these. And then as far as power goes, it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to just hook that in down here to a point and make sure this is turned on. Very, very nice. Perfect. So we're ready to go, right? Pretty much. Pretty much we're ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and fill in all the holes. And look at that. We have an enchantment system. Perfect. So what can I do with this? Well, so long as we have mobs that are being killed and such, we can take some books or tools doesn't really matter. Let's take some books, for example. I can put a book in here, and it should enchant this. At least it should. <laughs> Redstone's ignored. Is it only going to work on tools? Let's take a sword, for example. Process, ETA. Is it not working? Okay, so I think it is working. It just it needs its tank completely filled. Wow, okay, that takes a lot of essence. But it does enchant it with a level 30 enchant. But that's a lot of essence. That is a whole lot of essence for the enchant. I don't remember it using that much. Huh. Hey, but we ended up getting a nice efficiency 5 on here, which I could take because I don't think I have... Well, I do have efficiency 5 on here. Can I do this? Let's let's get some books. Let's just uh let's let's play around with this for for a little bit, all right? I think this is a good idea. All right, so let's go ahead and, and rip this thing apart. So we have efficiency here. We can split this. This tank is empty. Does this not I guess this doesn't use essence, does it? So there's the power. I wonder if I can take the efficiency here and make this an even higher efficiency. That would be pretty cool. Like, I don't remember if it does this or not. So if I put this here and I have efficiency. It does. Efficiency six. Okay. So we have efficiency six now on this pickaxe. That That's the nice part about this. And... You don't really have to worry about like that issue, you know, where you'll have an issue that says like, ah, oh, it's too, it costs too much experience. Well, this right here gets you right by that. This, this is really powerful. So I am back at it again at the dissolution chamber and here we go. I am, I'm getting this done. I am making another one of these guys. We go ahead, the, uh, the advance because I want to make an advanced black hole tank. Look how much that holds. That holds a lot of buckets. That is 65,000 buckets. Yeah, that's that's a lot. And I'm going to need that because I want to have some sort of buffer for my fluids and uh, or for my um, experience. So that way, if we're doing something else and this is running, we can keep that running and keep our backlog of experience, which is exactly what we need if we plan on enchanting a lot of things, which I, I kind of want to. Um, so black hole tank let's go ahead and make this thing um we're gonna need a couple of eyes of ender some ender pearls which you're kidding me i'm out of um th this right here is why i really wish i could change the spawner to an enderman spawner but i can't so back to the end for me i'm just going to use my ender disruption and my sweeping edge and all of this great stuff and just manually kill some more enderman well after all of that here we go. We have an advanced black tank uh, set up. Now, um, I did have a tank that I was using for this. And you can see the way I've set this up. So I have my main tank, which is providing everything. This floods down into what is a buffer tank. 
Um, so you have this next in line and then everything else is pulled from your buffer tank or Q tank or whatever you want to call this. But instead, I am going to set this up as my buffer tank. And you can see down here, it tells you how many buckets and it looks really good. I really like the way this looks and it's going to hold all of our fluid. And uh, just to make this even better and just dump this tank, I'm going to go ahead and have this one dumped. There we go. And that is going to add to everything. And we're, we're going to have a storage of about 85 buckets and give or take how much is actually stored in the cables as well. So, you know, after all is said and done, it's going to look like this. Pretty nice. And now every time something's killed, it's going to add to this amount. And as you can see, it holds a lot, which is pretty cool. And we can actually show or hide the display. I like the display, though. It actually looks kind of cool. But anyways, so now when we go to enchant something, um, it's going to work pretty nicely. Now, this right here uses uh, 32 buckets almost. I'm sure it uses closer to 32 or maybe uses exactly 32 buckets to enchant. I'm thinking there's more 30 uh, exactly, probably because it uses 30 levels. It does say it uses 30 to enchant at level 30, I do believe. Um, so if we put like a sword, for example, like this sword right here into it, let's get some books because I do want to empty this sword because this is the thing that I really want to do enchant. Um, was this thing right here. So if I put the books in here, you can see extracts from items will be transferred to the books. What, what else would it change to if I swap this? Oh, I guess it just deletes them. So that would just delete the enchants if you just remove, if you, if you change that setting. Okay. So that's pretty nice, but we can of course keep these books and of course we get our sword back and then what we can do is we can take this and throw it in here and see what it does, like what enchants it puts on here. I think it's the same as if we were going to, um, you know, do this a little bit differently. If we were going to actively um, play, like just gather the experience over time, I think it'd be pretty similar. Um, I don't think we're getting any other benefits, um, but hey, the one thing I'm happy about is this right here, the enchantment extractor and the enchantment applicator. These two alone are fair, are definitely worth it. Being able to take off enchants, uh, yes, please. Also being able to put on exactly what you want, yes, as well. So right now I'm sort of trying this out. As you can see, I just put leech four on here. And if I combine this, leech four and leech four, we get leech five. Now I do have another set here, which would allow me to make leech five, but you can't combine books in here. Um, so that's not going to be very useful for me. Also, I'm pretty sure this, yeah, sorts, um, I believe it sorts like enchanted books and will in like basically sort out enchanted items up here. Like books go down here. I think enchanted items go up here. I, I think. <laughs> So that way, like if you had a mob farm, you could use this to, to sort your stuff out. I'm not necessarily going to be using that, I don't think. But yeah, I wish this would allow me to do books. But instead, I think we can just use the old fashioned way and like just use an anvil, right? Um, this isn't too complicated, right? To do? No. Doesn't cost us anything. I love how it keeps track of the repair costs, which is kind of cool. Um, but now if I put this, which is five on here, this should make it six, like leech six. That's crazy. And we can keep doing that. Like sharpness is another thing that I, I would love to put on here. Sharpness is pretty nice. So a good way to search is you can use the little number or hash symbol and search for sharpness. And that is going to look for any books that have sharpness in them, such as these. These all have sharpness. Um, and uh, this sword also has sharpness, which I believe that's the sword we put sharpness on. So I can, of course, remove sharpness and that'll give us a base of sharpness five. This together will give us another sharpness or sorry, sorry, sharpness four. And that'll give us sharpness five. Um, we don't have a way of going higher than that, but hey, at least I have a sharpness five going on here. So what I've done is on my main sword that I had, my diamond sword, now that we're upgrading swords, I went ahead and ripped off all of the enchantments that were on it. Um, minus these vorpals that are over here, which uh, we did already have a vorpal. Um, that was on the our previous sword. But what we have here is the ability to raise the Vorpal level at least one. Um, so we put Vorpal 3 on there. We can put another Vorpal 3 and potentially raise the Vorpal if it lets us. And then we also have sharpness. So 
Let's get to enchanting. I hate that it does this. Um, can There we go. Can we make it go back? I hate that it has that weird little bug. But anyways, all right. You can see it, it's doing it right here. Um, okay, so we already have the leeching on here. So let's see if we can make this exactly the way that it was um, and add the sharpness on top of that. So let's add the unbreaking. Okay, ender disruption is not allowing the unbreaking or the capturing. Okay, for some reason, I'm not able to add that after the ender disruption. Maybe I can remove it and try again. It's being kind of weird. So I'm just I'm just looking at this and seeing why it wasn't allowing. I'm I'm gonna try and put the ender disruption last, putting all the like basic vanilla enchants on first. There we go. And then sharpness. Okay. So this thing's got 15 attack damage. Then Vorpal. Okay, then Vorpal again. Maybe we can get a bonus. Okay, so it doesn't work that way. Um, This one? Okay, so that, that extra will not work. And nor will that. Interesting. So really, we just have this sword. We cannot put these on. Maybe we can try using an actual anvil. Maybe maybe that will work. Uh, maybe it's just not wanting to allow me to do that. So it says it's going to cost 35 levels to do this. Um, which we do not have. And this one won't let me do it at all. But we can't put the leeching on. So I definitely want the leeching. That one's going to be great. So I needed to get some experience. So what I did was I went ahead and set this back up. And then just turned this off. I do need to get a lever and maybe use a lever on this just to make sure um, I can turn this off. So run with redstone signal. There we go. With that on, it should now be processing. And that way I can just pop this on and off when I want to, when I want to actually gather a little bit of extra experience and just stand by it. You can see that that is working. Um, now converting this type of experience over, it's not as easily done that way. So um, at least I couldn't really see a good way to do that, unfortunately, but I will be able to now enchant my sword and put the last really nice thing on here, which is that leech there. Very nice. So this sword is a beast. Who are you? We have a gunsmith. Where did you come from? Wait, what? What made you a gunsmith all of a sudden? We got we got this guy just chilling over here. Is it this thing making him a gunsmith? Or is it random every time? I like this though. We haven't gotten into the, the guns part of this mod. This is from Immersive Engineering, but if you didn't if you didn't already know. Oh, huh. I did look at all the villagers, by the way. There was a way to pretty much look at all the different vill villager types. Um so emeralds, and then you look at what they're used for, and you go over here to villager trades, and you can actually see all of the different villager types and there are a few from immersive engineering you can see right here um that are kind of interesting there's even a shader trader which is kind of cool he trades like these different shaders here i just don't really know what gets this guy it doesn't tell you what you need in order for this guy to exist but hey there's even a bee trader which is kind of cool um yeah an ap an apiris apiarist <laughs> So guys, I do appreciate you coming on this amazing journey with me. And uh, of course, I do want to give a shout out to one of my Patreons. And uh, let's go ahead and do that. Let's give a huge thanks to Salad. Thank you so much for your, uh, for your amazing support over on the Patreon. I do want to say a huge thanks to you. And guys, if you're interested in becoming a Patreon yourself, of course, you can find that link down in the description below. As we are slowly filling up <laughs> the sponsorship. Look at this, look at all these signs, all these episodes. Wow, just like really brings back memories. Like, man, we've come a long way. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Of course, if you did, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already, and also give this video a huge thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Of course, I'll see you in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.